Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave with old friend of Tested Brian Meek. How are you, sir? Oh, yeah, just fine. Just fine. Good to see you. Um, well, yeah, thank you for having me up. Dude. I appreciate it. Well, last time you were here, which is now almost exactly 10 years ago, um, I, my impression was that you guys were, New Concepts was a fledgling saw making company. And I will tell you that over the intervening decade, I very much enjoyed seeing every high-end woodworking video I've ever seen is using your guys' saws. Yep. Um, um, among the things you actually brought to show me 10 years ago and added to my saw collection were two of these beautiful anodized aluminum red saws. And this, which I've literally just this week mm -hmm. been glorying in the cage of this titanium saw. Do you want to talk about this? Okay, sure. Um, the, the birdcage design was honestly born out of frustration. Really? Yeah. Well, we were do we were working on the original one. The original titaniums look like this, mm -hmm. and they don't nest very well into the sheet. The, and when we were buying the sheet, what does that mean? Nest very well into the sheet? Okay, so if you get if you take two of these yeah. and you cut them, you waste a lot. Oh, I see. In terms of your part re yeah. retrieval, got it. Because those what, don't nest well. Yeah, because what we were doing was buying titanium that the Air Force had um, had problems with off the F twenty two line. And eventually they stopped screwing up, so we ran out. Oh, so you were buying the seconds from the QC from yeah. the Air Force. Yeah, wow. they, it, it failed QC. It was perfectly fine for hand saws, but it wasn't good enough for an F-22. Um, so you were leaving a lot of titanium on the table. Yeah, and suddenly we had to pay full price at retail, and that needed to stop. So, so that precluded being able to do these big open Cs. Yeah, exactly. So the way these guys are put together is the legs are cut right next to each other, and the spines are all cut next to each other in a different sheet, so there's a lot less wastage. The the you brought now you brought this last time, didn't you? No, actually, we I didn't. didn't. We no. didn't see this. This no. is amazing. This is your that's the prototype. Motor, that is the original birdcage. And you went from clearly you went from TIG welding to riveting, yep. which I think is a lot more sensible. Well, there's a reason for it. Oh, um, please. Um, titanium welds are notoriously brittle if you do them in open air. Oh. So these are riveted as a as a production jigging feature, mm -hmm. and also as failback, just in case the the welds that are up here totally fail. Oh, there are still welds, but yeah. the rip. Gotcha. Gotcha. So even if those welds completely fail, the rivets will hold it together. Now, for the neophytes watching, explain the reason that the cage, what the cage does. Um, two things. It gives you. Well, I, well, one thing I knew originally, and one thing I, I found out after we built them, it gives you a lot of torsional rigidity. Right, right. Um, so there's no yeah. racking. And when, when we were making, when I was designing the pieced part version of this, I had a version that was all flat. Right. And it was great in tension, and it was absolute spaghetti in torsion. And I finally got frustrated one night and said, I've got a, I've got a little teeny uh, TIG at home that fires through a microscope. <laughs> and I finally got, just got, I mean, this is actually the test legs from that sp the, the spaghetti monster. And I finally just said, okay, fine, got frustrated, tigged it here and here, took a pair of pliers, peeled it open, and zigzagged some titanium struts wow. in there. And said, okay, twist. I took it in the next day to Lee and said, okay, twist this. And it just doesn't. That's amazing. That must have been very satisfying. Oh boy, was it. <laughs> <laughs> so in the intervening decade, tell me what you guys, okay. were, actually, before you tell me what you're working on, is this is this is part of what you might have been yeah. working on. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me what you've been working on. Okay. I won't well, jump ahead. <laughs> what we've been working on, um, Lee passed away about six years ago. And the last thing that he and I worked on together was the big marketry saw that's sitting right there. I and can't even tell how this works looking at it. I mean, I kind of have some idea, but it's oh, yeah. kind of blowing my mind. Well, well, last time I was here, um, I didn't have a lot of things with me because I wasn't expecting to do a video. We were winging that. <laughs> um, all I had was one of these legs, yeah. and it was like, okay, what is this weird thing going to do? And this is a three a fully 3D saw, and it looks great in CAD. It the the models come out wonderful. The tension is great. I put it together and I said no. Do you, it, it, it's just it, it is that because it's really hard to put together any clean. Yeah, well, it's, it's very hard to get the joints up here good. Right. And it's just beastly. There's <laughs> got to be a better way to do this. Its rigidity is quite spectacular. Oh yeah, it's it it, it I mean it, it <laughs> it's built like a tank. Right. Um, but it just not. So this it, is a great lesson that that it can look phenomenal on the screen 
and then you see it in real life, and then you take two seconds and say no. no. Okay, so <laughs> um, where did you go from here then? Well, what Lee had found originally and was this thing. This is a saw designed by a guy named Fenner. It was uh, patented in 1884. Can I tell you yeah. that like one of my favorite things in the world is objects that I don't know why they exist. And this I, might be the greatest thing I've ever seen for like, I get that there's chains and that the saw blade uh -huh. moves dynamically, but I don't know why. I don't either. And I, <laughs> and I only, well, what, I've been, what I've been told about it is that it was originally intended for doing the gingerbread molding on old Victorian houses. And I have also been told that it was intended for doing that while up on, while the, after the boards oh, were installed up so on a ladder. you're sitting there doing this and doing this to guide yourself around? Yeah, but what lunatic's gonna do that 30 feet up on a ladder? I mean, that just... That, yeah, uh, that's, fair enough. That, that seems unlikely to me, but that's it's what I've been told. also a lot of weight to move oh, yeah. around. Yeah, this, this is, is cast iron, guys. Um, what I've, you know, what, what I've discovered, or what I, the way I describe it, is this is an answer to a question nobody was asking. Because <laughs> you can spin it, which yeah. is great, you know, as you're cutting along, but you can also spin your wrist. Um, and it, it's one of those, okay, that's nice, why? It increases the range of your ability to spin? Yeah. You can cut a full circle while you only can, a short amount? But you can also just swing your hand around. I mean, it's one of those right, right. weird. Um, these did not sell particularly well. <laughs> there are two of them that I know that exist. If you look online, most of the pictures you're gonna see are this actual piece of metal, because this one has gone through several. Where did you guys find this one? Um, Chris Schwarz at Popular Woodworking had it. He knew that we were interested in them, so he gave it to Lee. Amazing. Uh, there was a tool dealer who took pictures of it and gave it to Crit. I mean, most of the pictures you're gonna see are this one. Amazing. There's one other one that I know of, and that's it. Okay, so I see a similar concept of chain that moves a blade. Well, so what this guy does, this is, that's a question that nobody was asking. This is the answer 120 years later. Because the thing about the Fenner is you can spin your hand. Okay, fine. This guy is on a shock mount, so he goes up and down, but he can't spin. But when you spin the handle, now all of this ball chain makes the blades track and you can cut sideways and back and forth. And since you cannot swing the, your hand on this one, you need that mechanism. Uh, that's, the, that's the deal here. Can we see this go? Yeah, give me a second to tighten the blade. And so I've, that's it, it's a shock mount with a... Yeah. Wow. And it tensions. And if I get a little piece of wood out of my scrap bin here. I come bearing gifts. <laughs> All right, so the way this guy works, it's, it's got a flat spot on the handle so you can see, feel which ah, way right, the, right, the blade's right. going. All right, let's make sure I got this. And as I cut with it, the, the bungee cord back there is eating up all the weight, and it's got ball bearing guides. What? Well, it's got a swing arm. There's a swing arm in there, so oh I can God. I can actually move that way. And now I can move straight sideways. Yeah. And then turn around and go back this way. And I'm cutting backwards without, you know, without really having to think about it. Dude, I am completely amazed by can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. From an engineering standpoint, were you surprised you could get such nice parity across two long chains like this? Um, <laughs> I mean, I see the little, the gear, the driver you've got there. Yeah. It's an actual toothed wheel, so it, it registers. Mm -hmm. But even still, if I saw this, I'd be like, are you sure that these would line up? Um, I'm not surprised yeah. because it, there was a fair bit of R&D that went sure, into it. Sure. So by the time we got done, no, it, yeah, it fair works. Fair enough. But yeah. Um, the reason we didn't use timing belts is that there's a company in New Jersey that will custom make these chains for me in any length they want. Uh... And 
I can, you know, and they will do it so they're endless, so there's no patch ball. Right, right, no, and no attachment point, and it's the exact same number of balls. Exactly. Uh, and there's no timing chain. I mean, it's lighter than any kind of timing chain, isn't it? Well, it's like, well, I was thinking about a timing belt, but timing belts, you have to get them in specific lengths. Right. Oh, right. And this <laughs> thing, this thing is modular. It changes sizes. There's three different sets of legs for right, it. Right, right, right. So it can, this is 24. It can be 18. It can be 12. Oh my God. Right. So there's three different sets of chains and it was just not worth fussing with timing I, belts. I, this is so beautiful. Thank you. I mean, I also, I, I'll tell you, I was just doing a live stream last week where I was saying to the audience that that actually upon seeing your choices of anodization color mm -hmm. of the red and this and the gray, I was like, I, I know that these are excellent engineers just from how hard it is to get color choices to match each other and play well. Anyway. So you guys make, you guys, you guys are currently manufacturing and selling three different sizes of these. Yeah, well, there's, um... I had one already. I got it has it has you can get the tower unit and the, then you can get the legs separately. Gotcha. And so there's an there's a 24, an 18, and a 12. We mostly sell the 18s. Uh, I built the 24 just because I could. Right. You know, <laughs> the the traditional the traditional marquetry tool only it tops out at 18 inches. Right. And so I had to beat the traditionalists. So, <laughs> all right, we do 24. And I've got, um, one of the things about keeping things in the maker community is the guy who owns er uh, Erie Tool, uh, Lake Erie Tools, yeah. um, Nick Dombrowski, he is actually a mechanical engineer and has all the FEA software and more importantly knows how to use it. Ooh. So he, FEA is finite element analysis. analysis. Yes. And so and that's actually going to help you figure out some even better layouts for the space Well, that's holes. actually what specifically what was going on with this oh. thing. Because it's designed to hold 60 pounds of tension at the, end of, two. at the end of two, two so the feet. FEA, so the, the, the FEA has made choices like these little gussets with mm -hmm. the little land below them and all yeah. that stuff. And, wow. and you guys can't see it, but there's actually reinforcement bars on the back of this thing that are three quarter by five eighths. I mean, they're these giant reinforcement bars. And that's specifically because of the FEA analysis. And um, this is all sitting on a bungee shock mount. That's just, and it's all ball bearings. Is it you know, linear ball bearings? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know they made them that small. Quarter inch or? A uh, quarter inch, yeah. 12 um, millimeter? Amazing. Yeah. And that way it doesn't rack. It doesn't shudder. Right, right. You, you basically don't know that it's there. Dude, I'm so blown away. This um, is so beautiful. So this is the kind of thing it's designed to do, is marquetry, where you take different p colors of wood and you cut through and you basically lay it out like a picture. Um, and the way that works is... Oops. You, you set the thing at a very slight angle and you cut through and once you take it apart, there's a couple of layers here, you take it all apart and you take the top one. Oh, and the angle allows, and the angle you, to allows you to oh. punch through. And so then you put it, put them together and you've got no curve lines and you sand it off a little bit and everything. And it looks like there was, it was never cut. That's what the deal is with these things. Wow. Um, but just to prove I could, I cut the torch out of a dime with this thing at the end of two feet worth of leg. Let me see this. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I even got the, I even got the leaves. That is insanity sauce. That, 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 <laughs> was, just, that was me proving my point is this what is that was. Thing, this is the thing is I've been working again on the crown jewels and I'm needing to do stuff just like this. And I was literally just having one blade break per cut yep. last week. And I was thinking, I can't wait till Brian gets here. I had so many questions for him. All right. Yeah, that was just one of those. Okay, I'm going to prove my point now. Um, because people aren't used to a saw this big that can cut this well. Um, so this is, this is a, th am I looking now at a complete system? Are you yep. guys finished with this yep, system? Yep, it's done. It's all it out is, there and you can buy it, all the parts of it. Yep, it has been available since 2019. Um, it, Lee, when he passed away, he never got to saw it completely done. Ah. Oh. He saw, he saw this stuff. Right, right, right. But there was some stuff with the swing arms that wasn't right yet. Yeah. 
I mean, I had, this is one of the things he saw. So many different iterations, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the swing arm now, it's a two stage, it's a one stage unit. It just swivels. Right. And it actually, it gives you plenty of side to side motion. Mm -hmm. The original version, was like this, and it, had, it was a two-stage. It was a two-stage swing arm, and it's got a hundred bucks in bearings in it, and there's two of them. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it turns out it didn't work very well. So this was well. That's lucky. This is <laughs> yeah. This one was 3D printed just to see if it would work, and the answer was no. <laughs> but it's got you know ball. It's got linear bearings. It's got. Um, oh, I see. Surface right, bearings. Right, right. Surface yeah. bearings in there. It's got springs. It's got all kinds of stuff. And the answer was no. Just from a cost perspective. Well, no, it just if mechanically it didn't right, work. Right, right, right. Oh, I see. Right, it cost was, and mechanical. Yeah, if, if it, I told him I'd get it done, so the cost was no object. It mm -hmm. was just mechanically it didn't work the way I wanted it to. So, so, so given that you guys have such what I can see great saturation in the in the marquetry and woodworking community, what are your north stars right now? What are the are, what what sort of areas are you t looking towards? Well, we've got. I spent a bunch of years as a production jeweler, and Lee, Lee sold into that market. So my my guiding thing is to find pain points in the market and and fix them. Make sure. make our friends' lives easier. Yeah, uh, we've got a new product coming out that is a tower um, that gets the your bench pin up in the air. If you look at this thing, there's a dovetail on mm -hmm. here. That's an industry standard mount. There's all kinds of other things that fit on this from companies, not not just us. There's oh, several companies that, yeah. that use this mount. And it's like a standard taper? Yeah, it's a standard taper. And so what we did was we made, a lot of makers are working in improvised situations. They're working on, you know, kitchen tables, whatever. Right, right. We made this big steel tower that will get, that's adjustable for height, and it will get your bench pin wedge up where you need it to be, and it clamps onto the table, and you can take it off in 30 seconds. Amazing. Doesn't bugger up your table. It's rock solid. So you're like meeting your customers literally where they are, whether it's yeah. at their dining table or in a workshop. Absolutely. Amazing. Um, I, I love that. You know, that's the goal is to make people's lives easier. Yeah. And, you know, any place I can find somewhere to do that, we'll do it. You know, what's funny is uh, if, if I was still interested in making television, which I'm not right now, a show I totally want to do is go to people's tiny apartments and help them yeah. put a little workshop in there, oh, whether yeah. it's in the closet or under the mm -hmm. crawl space or whatever. Well, through through COVID, my wife and I spent a lot of time watching the, the HGTV, re, you know. Yeah, yeah, the remodel shows. Yeah, well, they're kind of chicken. I mean, especially there's a couple of them that are kind of chicken soupish. Yeah, you know it's you know happy people fixing stuff, and yeah. especially those years, man, happy people fixing stuff was a good was a good thing, and it would be a cool thing to do for the craft scene. Yeah, is, yeah, you know craft, how to make life easier, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. Lee and I really did do two guys in a garage to a million dollar company. That's I nothing makes me happier really. I mean, I, I mean I, I'm always I love stumping for local manufacturing. Uh, I also am a, you know, as you know, lifelong problem solver. And I love your classification of this as an answer without a question. And this is the answer yeah. 12 decades like, later. <laughs> yeah, 120 years later, you finally, find, you finally find the answer to that thing. That's amazing. But I mean, I, I wish, I, I think the guy's name was Charles Finner. I wish he could have seen where it went. I wish Lee could have seen where it finally ended up. Do um, you have the patent drawings? Uh, I I think we've got him in the office sometimes. Yeah. Um, because Lee was big on that stuff. And yeah. um, you know, there's there's stuff like that. There's a it's a there's a bit storage thing in there. Oh really? Yeah, I God knows what for what. But, but also in, look at that nice, like long knurl. Well, here, look at um look at the knurling on this. Where do you think that came from? Oh you uh -huh. mm -hmm. I've been you know what? I've almost worked myself up to the courage to try and make one of these that because Chris uses it on ClickSpring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well actually it was specifically Chris's video that, that did it. I knew it. Um, I knew it. Well the problem was in order to get it to work on the CNC, it has. It, I actually had to, to get some rollers custom made in Germany. Right. Um, <laughs> because you know it's got to be repeat for the CNC. It's got to be repeatable. And um, yeah, no, it was it was Chris. I blame Chris. I um, got to say, I, I I had no idea what you were going to bring today, and I it, it blows my mind completely wide open. It is such a beautiful mechanical device, I and uh, I want to put an order in for the twelve inch right away. Um, Brian. 
Yeah. I, thank you so much for oh, being yeah. your beautiful Thank you voice. for having me. This and is been, really wonderful. Yeah, it's been fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for supporting us by watching this channel. You can support us on an even deeper level by heading over to tested-store.com and picking up one of our tested embroidered baseball caps. We got your normal baseball cap, we got your flex fits, and we got flex fit truckers, and we are just starting to play around with lots of new designs, so check back regularly. Thanks.